Okay, so today we have Gene and Olympian. It is 4.49 a.m. Uh, I woke up and I was like, whoa, uh, let's do a reaction. Why the hell not? So yeah, Gene has been requested a lot. And um, Olympian, you know, specifically too. And this song I see here, uh, this version anyway, is a little bit shorter than the other versions I saw. But this video was the one that somebody, you know, sent to me. So um, anyway, that's what I wanted to say if, if it doesn't sound right or something. But anyway, let's get into this. Talk about it after. It has the most views anyway. So uh, let's <laughs> let's go. My goodness. Like I said, these guys have been requested a lot. So I'm interested.
glorious strings there. All right, so there it is. Uh, Gene and Olympian. And like I said, this version was a little bit shorter than the other version I saw of the song, and I apologize if it's not right or whatever. But again, this one had the most views, so and it was the one somebody sent to me. So anyway, I just wanted to say that again. I don't want to be, you know, a bad guy here or something. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so I have to say, obviously, and I didn't say at the top, but these guys were heavily influenced by the Smiths. This is what I was told, and of course, I mean, I like the Smiths. <laughs> um, anyway, you know, the poster behind me and everything, but... They were influenced by the Smiths, influenced by the Jam as well, I uh, saw. And uh, those are two bands that obviously I've reacted to a lot, and uh, I like a lot of their songs. And, uh, you know, so listening to this, for me, I don't know if people think this way or not, but to me, it didn't sound like a Smiths ripoff, I would say. Um, uh, Martin Rossiter, I want to say here, on, is on lead vocals, and he's on keyboards as well. And, uh, I mean, those keyboards were striking throughout the track, too. But, uh, anyway, his vocals um, didn't sound like, you know, more. It didn't really sound like he was trying to sound like Morrissey to me, I, I just want to say. Um, and, I mean, I've, I've heard a lot of Morrissey. I mean, my God. But, um, anyway, uh, yeah, it didn't sound like he was trying to rip him off. But he had that same, you know, swaying kind of voice here. And the band, I mean, yeah, they have obviously kind of a, I don't know, how would you would say, like a very... Uh, slow kind of approach to the music at, at the start um almost honestly kind of reminded me i want to say of like the mock turtles when i listen to uh can you dig it um i don't know why I, I think that's what i'm thinking of but of course these guys were kind of put in the brit pop i guess category so i guess that makes sense but at the same time uh yeah they had that but they also had an edge to them it didn't you know wasn't just kind of that piano, you know, driven song, you know, kind of ballad the whole way through or whatever. Uh, this, you know, like I said, had an edge to it. And, um, you know, the drums kicked in at one point with uh, Matt James on the drums here. And uh, and also, I might as well just say everybody. I mean, Steve Mason on guitar. Steve Mason, also a hockey player, I have to say. Anyway, uh, Kevin Miles on bass. And like I said, Matt James on drums. And also, like I was saying about the strings. I mean, the strings were glorious, especially at the end there. Uh, they really came through. And then, you know, they, re they really, like, shine throughout the track, too. I mean, it was a glorious track, I have to say uh sonically it was just beautiful and uh i could clear my throat <laughs> and i just love how soft his voice is um but at the same time you know and it's deli his delivery too but i wanted to say before i get into something else here but he, when he says how can you decline such grand designs and i'm flattered that you thought i make a good reward now this is where the instruments kind of pick up and like i said the music has an edge to it and at this point it's like uh, Martin's voice doesn't really, I mean, he's kind of stayed in his natural place, you know, like I said, so soft and so subtle, very laid back too. I mean, this whole song is very laid back. Um, but anyway, we get into when he talks here, uh, you know, when he says, uh, I wanted to be there with you. And then he kind of raises his voice and almost, I don't know why this came to mind, but it almost kind of reminded me of a, of Mick Jagger. Uh, and I always hate to give comparisons or whatever of people, but that's who came to mind. I mean, everyone talks about, I guess, how these guys were influenced by the Smiths. But when he starts saying, I wanted to be there with you, just his delivery and that reminded me of Mick Jagger for some reason. But anyway, um, yeah, so I mean, I think I've said everything I really wanted to say. I did say, I think earlier something about, you know, the uh, keyboards were very, you know, heavily driven in the song or whatever. But of course, the guitar here too, like it's a laid back guitar, uh, really was important too. Um, so I didn't want to, you know, take uh, the guitarist out of uh, you know out of line here either but um anyway love the track how subtle it is how soft um but then again like i say it does get you know pick up at points now i want to get to these lyrics here and i have to say these look to be in a different order than what i listened to in the song so again i don't know if there's just a difference in this different you know in song versions or what but either way these are the lyrics i see here uh so give me something i can hold with that something i will grow make me crazy with your arms it's all gone hazy it's all gone wrong now <laughs> I, I would have to say this there's a lot of unfulfillment going on it seems like this guy's trying to attain something which is unattainable for him uh he a lot of frustration obviously uh we'll get to some dishonesty at some point too and uh and it's just it, i don't know these lyrics seem a little bit more dangerous than what uh what they seem like on the surface you know when you're just listening to the song because uh the ending as well um intrigues me a lot so we'll get to that soon of course but uh, the first you know the beginning comes first um so, but also you know what he says uh, he seems he really wants touch. I mean, he's talking about, you know, make me go, you know, uh, when he says, give me something I can hold. He really wants to hold somebody. Uh, I would say, make me crazy with your arms. So, I mean, I just think about how make me crazy with your arms. I mean, it's not even like really a sexual thing or whatever. You know, you might think of different parts of a of a, of a body or something you might want to hold or touch or something. Uh, but he's just talking about their arms. I mean, my goodness gracious. And then it's all gone hazy. It's all gone wrong. Nothing's gone right, of course, I feel like. Um, and then I like I talked about already, but how can you decline such grand designs? And I'm flattered that you thought I make a good reward. It seems like maybe some sarcasm here. And that's where, you know, my first hint of like, um, you know, is he going to like, you know, is he going to about to blow or something? Is he going to go crazy? He seems like he's on on the edge again because he's just been trying to 
fulfill something which he can't and he's just he's about to blow or something like that uh and that's what comes to my big head anyway olympian framed by god so bring me water to cool off how can you decline such grand designs one more time there uh and again so bring me water to cool off i think about you know bring me clarity or something or you know or also when he talks about olympian i think about I, I just in you know the tense of an the um you know the terms of an olympian where you know you whatever it is i mean you whatever sports or whatever you're doing uh at the end of it you usually have maybe not water but gatorade whatever the hell you'd want to drink and uh, you know bring me water to cool off or whatever i think about that way too you know not just uh bringing clarity but also you know an olympian who needs a drink after their sport or something like that anyway um <laughs> then he says you know how can you survive my blatant lies and i'm flattered that you thought uh so come taste my good reward and he talks about you know, how can you survive my blatant lies? This is where I talk about dishonesty, uh, maybe some regrets as well. It seems like he's going through a lot of turmoil. He's going through a lot anyway. This narrator, this guy, uh, you know, in Martin's voice anyway, that is coming through. Uh, it's very, uh, like I said, intriguing. Formidable, but not afraid. Or uh, of the next world, just delayed. I got a burp. There we go. Now, on to the next part here. This is the, the ending here. A lot of repetition. I wanted to be there with you. For I can only be normal with you. Now, of course, this line just by itself, I can only be normal with you, is lovely, it's romantic, it's beautiful, all this stuff. Love lo love the line a lot. I've given my all for you. Uh, again, he's just so desperate at this point, you know, so lots of despair. I mean, my God. Now you, I wanted to be there with you. I can only be normal with you, you know, no, no, no. And now these no, no, no's come in. And it's almost like he's, uh, I don't know, almost showing again. Uh, you know, making it even more clear that these no, no, no's, he's just saying like, it just didn't work out. No, no, no. It'll never happen. No, no, no. All this kind of thing. Just to add more emphasis, I guess, to it not working out. Uh, you know, he said, I wanted to be there for you, but it just wouldn't work. Uh, I can only be normal with you. Again, just so beautiful. And, uh, but I want to get to the uh, last part here, basically. When he says, I wanted to be normal with, or I wanted to be there for you. I can only be normal with you. I have taken my life for you. And then we go on, Olympian friend by God, you'll be gone. Uh, but yeah, it's just like, I, I've taken my life for you. So I, I guess that he, you know, kill himself at the end. Um, and also, I've, I did see in the comments on uh, YouTube here, you know, how he, somebody asked, you know, is he talking about like a double suicide or is he talking just about a suicide? Because again, that's what I'm saying. Is there something darker here? Or am I just, you know, looking way too, <laughs> way too deep into it? Um, but yeah, I mean, I've taken my life for you. I mean, it just, to me, it just seems like, he ended his life for for this person or whatever because again every, he couldn't just he couldn't reach them there's no point maybe there's no point to life at that point um but i mean yeah i thought again i loved the way you know i love this the string arrangements i love the piano or keyboards i guess you would say loved martin's voice so soothing so nice and you know swaying around and everything but like i said again didn't really sound like a morsey ripoff to me but again maybe it might sound like that uh maybe in other songs too it might come across way more but uh either way i like this one and uh yeah, and like I said, this you know this version I guess maybe is different from other versions. I don't know, but this is the only one I've heard now. <laughs> but um, I enjoy it, like I say, and um, I really uh, I really thought it, you know it's so intriguing too with these lyrics too. That's uh, one thing that really got me when he's talking about you know taking I've taken my life for you. Uh, so anyway, you know, let me know your thoughts down below. What you think the hell is going on here? And uh, that's always appreciated. I mean, my goodness. So uh, yeah, I guess that's all I gotta say. So thanks for the requests for Gene here. And again, I just love the name. Just so simple. I mean, Gene. I mean, my God. Uh, but anyway, nice fella. And I uh, liked it a lot. So yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for liking, subscribing, commenting, all that stuff. Really appreciate all the support. And I will talk to you guys again soon. I appreciate that.